Good morning and welcome to Community United Methodist Church in Fairfield, California. We are glad that you are here. This is a time that we, we certainly need to gather. It's good to gather in worship, in praise of our God, in uh, prayer together. In the midst of all the things that are going on, we are glad that you are here with us, that we are here together. We wanted to just give a celebration that last Saturday, I know that seems so long ago now, but last Saturday, Healthy Start, uh, who we've supported with backpacks, they, in the midst of the school district and with the police department here, they gave out, I've heard two different numbers, 750 to 1,000 backpacks were given out last weekend. If you were driving past the Solano Mall, you would have seen, I heard a line of cars going around the parking lot. And so we praise God for being part of that good work that care for our community here and look forward to what else that might lead to. We also give thanks that back in uh, the end of July, that from our church, $1,200 was sent to UMCOR for help for COVID uh, relief efforts where it's most needed in our country, in the world. And so praise God and thank you for all of those who are able to give and share and serve uh, and honor God in that way. I want to remind us all to register to vote. We are in that season and to be sure to cast your vote as a right and responsibility as citizens together. We give thanks for all that God has given us and let's sing together as we worship our God. Now let us prepare our hearts for a time of prayer together. And of course, we'll be praying for all of those who continue to be facing the fires and possible evacuations impacted by the smoky air. For our first responders and firefighters who are doing a huge, huge job these days. Uh, we want to mention some people who, uh, not people in our church, we, we are grateful that while many in our church were evacuated, that everyone is well and no one so far as we know have lost their homes in the fire. But friends, friends of ours have. So Janie DeToy lifts up her friend Trudy Gardinier uh, and their family that lost three homes in the fire. Jean McConnell's friends, Anna Brannigan, uh, they lost their ranch. And Linda Patrick, some of her retired teacher friends, also lost their homes. So we'll be lifting them and others up in prayer. We also uh, heard that Verona Boucher, uh, many of you know her, a friend of uh, Sylvia Cross, her mother, passed away yesterday in Maryland, non-virus related uh, reasons. And so we just lift up this family as well. And many of you also heard about Nathan Garza, a classmate actually of Marcus Fleming, a Rodriguez High School graduate who was killed in American Canyon. His, uh, Nathan's mother, Tracy, also used to work here. He was killed in a shooting in American Canyon. So we lift up these dear ones as we gather our hearts in prayer. As we begin, let us pray our prayer together when I am unpeaceful. 
I will trust in you, O God. We'll pray that three times. So let us take a deep breath in. Slowly out. When I am unpeaceful, I will trust in you, O God. Again, deep breath in. When I am unpeaceful, I will trust in you, O God. One last time. Breathe in. When I am unpeaceful, I will trust in you, O God. Almighty God, we praise you and we thank you for the life that you give us, for the basics of home and food. And we thank you for those who serve and work for firefighters and first responders in this time, working so hard to keep people safe. Give them times of rest and refreshment, wisdom and safety. The California fires are a God-sized need, Lord, so we come to you and ask for your help and your mercy. Help us to seek you in this time and extend your care in your name. We are part of your creation that you declare good. And we give thanks for the goodness of this material world as we face the frailness of it and of life here. We are humbled and pray with those who have lost homes and lost lives. Have mercy on them, O oh God, comfort and meet them in their sorrows. Provide servants and resources to walk with them in this unexpected journey ahead. We hold out your hope for them and for others that they may not, des they may not despair. O oh God, bless teachers and students, parents returning to school. Anoint them far beyond their ability in this challenging time. We thank you for the work of schools to care for children. Thank you for the opportunity to partner with Healthy Start. Bless their staff and families in need that they serve. Multiply the resources they receive to feed bodies and spirits with your Holy Spirit. And for our country, as the presidential campaign unfolds, may we be your people in this democratic process, seeking your best for our country with passion, with love, with respect, as we desire to honor you first and foremost, O oh God. May we worship you above all others, Lead us to seek your justice for all peoples. Guide us in our conversations with each other and not at each other. Lord, for those who are sick in our church and community, we ask your healing presence for your peace to meet them. For the Boucher family and for the Garza family who have lost loved ones, we ask, Lord, your blessing, your presence, your, your, your care and your arms around them, Lord, in the shock and uncertainty of this time. Lord, for those who are out of work, for those in homes that are not safe, for people who are hungry, for others without homes, Lead us to be your church, the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Thank you that you care for them as you care for us. Thank you for the many agencies that serve, and yet we know it is not enough. Guide us to be good stewards of all that you provide, to give witness to who you are in this world. Thank you, Lord, for the church family here at CUMC. Grow our connection to you and to each other in this physically distanced time. Bless us with your Holy Spirit. Give us compassion and courage to trust you and to follow you and give praise to you this day and in the days ahead. We pray together now, Lord, the prayer that your son Jesus taught us, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any, if any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among, among you, richly as you teach and 
admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Good morning, boys and girls of all ages. I want you to think back to last Christmas or your last birthday. Did you get any new toys for presents? Did you get any new clothes? Well, I know you may not get as excited about new clothes as you do about new toys, but I do know the good feeling that you have when you wear some new clothes that you really, really like. Usually, unless it's very hot, like it's been this week, one of the very first decisions that we have to make in the morning is, is what we're going to wear. Now, could be we're wearing bathing suits this week. The clothes that we wear are very important to many of us. Most of us want our clothes to be in style. To some people, even the brand of the clothing is important. We want our clothes to be in good condition, with no holes or missing buttons, and of course we, we want them to be clean. The clothes that we wear say a lot about us. Sometimes I see little girls wearing t-shirts that say princess or too cute. Now no boy would ever be caught wearing those, would they? Boys go more for football jerseys or Spider-Man t-shirts or something like that. And then sometimes you have to have a hat or a cap that tips off the outfit. As you are choosing what you're going to wear each morning, do you ever give a thought to what the Bible says we should be wearing? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us what shirt or pants to wear, but it does have something to say about what we as God's children should dress ourselves in. The Bible says that we should dress ourselves with kindness, gentleness, patience, and it says we should put on a forgiving attitude. Finally, the Bible says that we should top all that off with love. That brings it all together in perfect unity. The great thing about this is that the Bible describes what fits all of us, boys or girls, young or old. Do you know what else is great about all that? It never goes out of style and it brings peace to all around you. The next time you're trying to decide what to wear, why not put on a little kindness, a little gentleness and patience, add some forgiveness, then top it off with love. Will you pray with me and repeat the words? Dear Father, we are usually careful in choosing what clothes to wear. Help us to be just as careful about choosing our attitudes. Remind us to put on a little kindness, gentleness, patience, and forgiveness, and top it off with love. And all God's precious children said, Amen. Well, good morning, friends, and thank you to Andrew Pearson, who offered our scripture reading, and to Miss Linda for our children's moment. Well, Shirley, whew, what a week this has been. Heat wave, power outages, fires, evacuations. And we're looking at a series in these weeks about being people of peace, God's people of peace. In this strange and unusual time, in these past couple of weeks, we looked at uh, reminding ourselves and remembering that God is our peace. God is peace itself, especially when we are beyond our own abilities like Gideon. 
that God is our peace and God is my peace. Can we say that together? God is our peace and God is my peace. Then we, last week we were reminded that we can seek the Lord for a future with hope. Like God's people who were in exile in Babylon. That these days our future feels more unknown than ever. But we know that a faithful God, we know that faithful God who holds our future. Today we're going to look at what God's community of people, of peace, looks like. A community shaped by uh, looking like our God. You know, this week I have a friend who's a preschool teacher, and she wrote a blog as a teacher, uh, how she's been experiencing all this since March. And she kept saying in her blog, it shouldn't be this way. Maybe you're feeling that way too. It shouldn't be this way. People missing birthday parties and not seeing their friends and uh, wearing masks so it makes it harder to connect for teachers and students to connect together, to grow, to develop. She said her, her preschool students, she finds them often saying, because of the virus, because of the virus, there are so many things we can't do, aren't there? Things we have to do. Kids separated, we can't see our family and friends the way we used to. We can't worship here together at church. I know many miss hugging, hugging and seeing each other, doing the things we want to do in the ways we usually did them. Because of the virus. And perhaps you're also thinking another phrase as our presidential campaigns start to move into full blast mode. Maybe you're saying, because of politics. And for us here, maybe this week we're adding, because of the fires. Well, all would agree that this is a very stressful time for the world. There's so many unknowns, things beyond our control. The word of the of the of the year, I guess, is pivot, ever-changing, turning, shifting, figuring out, which in itself is kind of tiring. It's wearying, it's exhausting. Life is stressful. And in one survey, uh, it said that parents of school-aged children are the most stressed of everybody, helping their kids manage school, continuing to work, doing the other things they have to do. And you know what it's like when you just have that ongoing stress in your life. You're not, people don't sleep so good. They get grouchy. Maybe your eating is not so good. You're angry, you're anxious, you're low energy, you're sleeping too much, you're not sleeping enough. And we're finding ways to cope. And we have to find new ways, don't we? Because a lot of our normal opportunities and distractions are not available. While we talk about how contagious the virus is, stress is really contagious, isn't it? People seem more negative, short-tempered, complaining. And don't you notice that when you're with other stressed out people who are just sharing all that stress, it's easy to get stressed too. It's hard to hold your peace. It's hard to block it off. Maybe you have contact with someone through your work, at the store, in traffic, and you just, uh, you're all stressed out and you bring it home to your own family and share it with them, or vice versa. You're stressed at home and then you go to the store and you get yelled at in the store. If they or we or somebody is not able to handle this stress, to return to peace, doesn't that stress just grow and spread everywhere? How do we handle this stressful time that we are facing? There is a scene in, I don't know if you are Lord of the Rings fans, it's kind of been a while since those movies came out, but Frodo who is a small hobbit, has been tasked with this huge journey, 
this huge job, not just for himself, but for really the world. And he says, I wish it need not have happened in my time. Don't we all think that? Wish it didn't happen now. And Gandalf, Gandalf the wizard, Gandalf a powerful wizard, he says, so do I. And so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. This happens early on when they're just kind of figuring out what's going to have to happen, that evil is entering the world in a new way and that they must destroy this ring of power. And likewise for us, friends, it is not in our power to wish COVID didn't happen, that it didn't happen now or ever. But each day, each day we can grieve the things that we miss. And we can thank God for the things we still have and decide what we will do today. What will we do in this moment? This is really the question for every time. What do we choose to do in this moment, regardless in the midst of all that is happening? Sometimes I used to think, wouldn't it be great to have been with Jesus back when he was alive, to see him in person, to meet him face to face, to be among the people who followed him. I think it would have been a wonderful and also challenging, very challenging time. It was a time when people were not so sure who he was. The churches and groups that formed of his followers had Jewish converts and Gentile believers. People that did not hang out together, they did not mix together. Now they are living out as God's family together. This new thing that Jesus has introduced into the world. And it was an amazing new thing that was happening, was open to all to be a part of. But I would wonder that after a bit of time, like any relationship or marriage, that glow of newness wore off. And they faced that ongoing work of living into God's life of love. But they had choices to make. They were people living under the Roman Empire. They were living with the peer pressure from outside the community, I'm sure, of family and friends who were not Christians, of society that kept saying, hey, be more like us again, like you were before. And they faced challenges inside, inside the church community to build new relationships, to trust and live with love with unlikely partners. It was a challenge. Paul's friend Epaphras was believed to have started the church in Colossa. He didn't want to see this faithful church being torn apart, but he began to see the ripples of that possibility happening. And this letter was written to the Colossians by Paul, some think by Paul, some think perhaps by a student of Paul, which actually was a normal thing at that time. But we'll just say Paul. And he was not just writing from some comfortable scholarly place, from some wonderful church that he was living among. He was writing these words about peace and life for Christ from prison. From prison, he was talking about peace. Because while Paul led many to know and follow Jesus, for others, Paul was a big troublemaker. People even wanted to kill him. What would it take to be at peace in prison? To stay connected to God when people want to kill you? To keep following and trusting him? I think there are words here for us, too, in these stress-filled days. First, Paul reminds the church of their baptism. And that is to us, too, our baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. That when we commit to following Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we say that we receive, we accept 
God's freedom and power to resist evil, to resist injustice and oppression in all forms, to turn from the ways of this world to God's ways, to put our full trust in Jesus and promise to serve him among all the people that God calls us to. Friends, God came to be with us in the human form of Jesus to live and love and show us the grace of life with God and that Jesus in union with the Heavenly Father, that he lived for God's kingdom, sacrificing himself, defeating death for us. And through his life, through his death and resurrection, the world is changed. When we follow and put our trust in Jesus, we have new life. We have a new way in him and with Jesus. Do you remember? Remember how God has saved you, has led you, has met you in times of trouble. In times that you think, well, I don't know how that happened, but must have been God. God met me. God led me. God set me free. Friends, remember who you are and whose you are. Children of God, sons and daughters. Paul then joins in with the prophet Jeremiah, who we heard last week, where God warns his people against false teaching. Because as humans, we are ever tempted to focus on the things that sound good to us. Our human ways, our human plans that really are not God's plans. That if we take Jesus really seriously, that others will judge us, will challenge us. Because Jesus' ways will look foolish to the world. That warning, that warning against false prophets to check our lives, to check who we are listening to, it is still as true then as it is today. Who do we follow? Who are we becoming like? Who are we listening to? And do they reflect Jesus? Or how do they reflect Jesus? Verse 15 of our reading says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. Remember, the word for peace in the Bible is shalom, which means a wellness, a wholeness of body and of spirit. So it's saying, let the wholeness and wellness of Jesus take over your whole body, your whole life, your whole community. That is what God is offering and inviting us to together. How are we going to learn about what this peace looks like? From God, from God's family who will reflect and reveal that through their lives. And Paul spells out what this looks like. He says, remember that you, we are chosen. We are holy and we are beloved. God's beloved. So wear God's clothes. Wear God's clothes of compassion of kindness, of humility, and meekness, patience, and love. Now, we might listen and look at that list of qualities and say, those don't seem that strong. Those don't seem so tough. We want something more commanding, taking action, forceful, powerful. But friends, remember that these qualities describe our Lord Jesus. And Jesus stood strong in the face of wrong, in the face of greed and violence, of divisions, with these qualities, serving God and loving. They were powerful qualities, qualities that upset folks, qualities that made people want to kill him because they were so undermining. Will you wear God's clothes and qualities? Then he goes on to say, bear with and forgive if there are complaints 
against you as Jesus has forgiven you. You know, forgiveness is really not natural to most of us, I want to suggest, or only up to a point. But the forgiveness that is freely given to us, that we know in this life through our Lord Jesus, I hope you know that forgiveness. I hope you know that freedom that you can come to the Lord again and again to receive his restoration, his embrace, that he is ever ready and inviting you. But that free forgiveness that we receive so generously, so abundantly, we are to share that forgiveness with others. We are to practice it together. Anyone in a good long-term relationship will know that mutual forgiveness is the key to a good relationship. That forgiving one another is key to life. That we must forgive others and that frankly we are all in need of forgiveness. Paul goes on to talk about the word of Christ living richly in us. Not stingy, not just a little bit, but a lot, abundantly, an outpouring. And to teach it to others, to share it, to have gratitude, gratefulness in our hearts, singing praise, singing songs to God. And that all we do to do it in the name of Jesus, thanking God the Father. Now, in some ways, you might look at this list and go, that's simple. Those are familiar things. Those are basic things of being civil with one another. There is a lot in those few verses, friends. You know, and we, we hear that kind of similar encouragement elsewhere. But aren't they hard to do? They are hard to do with people we like, let alone with people we don't like. We don't know. But as God's people, this is what it is like us to do. This is what it is like for our community to grow in, to nurture one another in. Now, every person, every community has times when they are strained to their limits, where we do not put on God's clothing. We are not le- living as God's chosen and holy ones. And instead, we put on the clothing of bad tempers of meanness, of irritability, of doing what I want to do, of putting anything else first over God, which is idolatry. And that happens even in the church. Now, friends, we know that is true. And that is not who we are to be as God's people. The great commandment is to love God and to love others. It didn't say love all those who agree with you, love all those in your political party, in your ethnicity, in your economic class, in your lifestyle. Our relationships and how we treat each other matters to God. Friends, remember who you are and whose you are. Children of God, sons and daughters. I have to say one thing in the midst of disasters like the fire danger this week. I am so grateful and encouraged to see signs of human kindness at its best. Wednesday, I found communities helping each other online, next door, Facebook, Facebook pages for evacuation help in Solano County. People offering information, help with animals, rides, places to stay. Perhaps, like me, you might have uh, made calls, received calls, texts, prayers as people reached out to one another. Food was provided to shelters. People were helping people. And it was a beautiful thing. During these times, I think what is essential becomes so obvious. Caring for whoever is in need. You know, a a while back I heard this interview. A young Asian man was at a rally for racial justice and he gave this passionate speech 
where he acknowledged his own racism against blacks and others that he had not, had not cared before and that he wanted change in himself and he called other people to change. A few weeks later, maybe a month later, they came back to interview him and said, what is happening in your life? And he had kind of backed down from that passionate moment. You can't maintain that kind of passion forever. But, and they asked what had happened or what was going on. He said, well, I had this thing happen where I was somewhere and a homeless man came and asked me for help or for some food and I just ignored him and I was rude and I just walked away. I didn't even hardly notice him. And as I thought about it later, I realized I was wearing a shirt that said justice for all. And I heard him sharing that and I thought he has become aware that living something out is much harder than our dreams and our hopes. That there is a long journey to move towards what we aspire to be, what we hope for, what we long for. That he was experiencing that disappointment in himself and his inability to sustain, to change, to suddenly be in this other place of who he imagined himself becoming. That change that we hope for in ourselves and in society is much more complicated. That there is a lot to learn. And that I hoped for that young man that it was not too much. That he did not fizzle out. But what I thought was, we all need help. We all need partners for that kind of significant change. Whether it is a change in our diets, in our health, learning new habits or skills or sports or changing our mindset, being open to what else is going on that we are not aware of. You know, some of us can do those things on our own, can do some things on our own, but really, friends, I want to say to be like Jesus, we are made to do it together. That's how God intended to be. That God wants to be in every part of our lives. For us to be fully clothed in our lives in Christ. And that work is a lifetime. A lifetime of work. We need the grace of God. We need others, partners to live into this new life. Teachers. Colleagues. And teaching it to others after us. I have to say, it, sometimes it seems daunting, but the, in these days, I cannot imagine facing all that is going on without our Lord and without a community of faith. Where would I be? I can't imagine. I think I would be a big mess at this point, and perhaps you too. God is our peace. That is what is different from us from all the other groups that are doing good things, that are providing support, that are uh, having a goal of justice. God is our peace. Let's say that together again. God is our peace. And God is my peace. The Spirit of God is alive in us and with us. You know, at the beginning, I mentioned those preschool kids that were saying, because of the virus, I can or can't do whatever. I want to say now to us, friends, because of Jesus, because of Jesus, I can put on, we can put on the clothes of compassion, of kindness, of humility and meekness, patience and love. Because of Jesus, we can work towards. We can keep at bearing with each other, forgiving and receiving forgiveness. We can seek and share God's word until it lives in us so fully. We can be grateful and sing songs to God. We can do all in his name. Because of Jesus, we 
can have peace in this time, in this time of virus and fires and political change together, together. We are but one part of God's great community. But who are you doing all this with? Who is helping you and who are you being helped by? This is what it is like us to do as God's people. And in our distancing, it is more important than ever. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, these are very um, familiar or favorite verses. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Don't we need to pray ever more now than other times? We need to be with our God, our God who is peace himself. Because of Jesus, we can be God's community of peace. We can share it with others. We can let God guard us. Praise God. What good news to me, to you, and to the world. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. Take a deep breath in. When I am unpeaceful, I will trust in you, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you long to be with us, that you lead us in the way of life, that at the beginning of creation, in the midst of chaos, that you brought order. And so we ask, Lord, that you would bring order and good even out of a time like this. Pour out your Holy Spirit and fill us with your peace. Would you be our peace, almighty God? Help us to come to you with our fears, with our anger, with our anxiety, trusting that you welcome us and are glad to be with us even in the midst of it even when we cannot get ourselves straight, that you are ever ready to help us and to love us. This is not too much for you, O oh Lord. May our lives reflect you and may our world reflect you more and more. May your kingdom come and your will be done, not ours, O oh God. Give us wisdom, give us courage to recognize and follow where you go. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I send you out to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to guard you in Christ Jesus, to be God's community of peace by the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the power and presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and in you now and always. Amen.